Good morning, everyone. Hello, welcome back to our class, Technology for Teaching and Learning. So today, we, we will be talking about the ICT policies and safety issues in teaching and learning. But for this video, we will be talking only about ICT policies. Okay? Now, why ICT? Why are we talking about ICT? Education, ako, maybe you, may, you might be telling yourself, why ICT? ICT is now part of uh, anything about our life. Think of anything and you cannot do away with, with ICT. Nalala ko ngayon isang joke sa, nabasa ko sa Facebook. Uh, two crews are uh, talking to themselves. They are, they are seeing a scarecrow and then sabi ng isa, um, don't you worry, that is not a man. Sabi, sabi ng isang crew, uh, what made you say that? Tapos sabi ng isa, hindi ang tao kasi wala yung cellphone. <laughs> Di ba? Parang ang cute lang. Oo nga, parang uh, lahat na yata may cellphone. Most people have laptops. So, if you want to be a teacher, you need to be equipped with ICT knowledge. Now, how about these ICT policies? What are ICT policies that we are about to, to, to tackle, to talk about? Uh, Google defined ICT policies as this. A national ICT policy is a policy put into place by governments and stakeholders who are committed to the process of bringing digital technology to all individuals and communities so that they can have access to information. So these ICT policies are cascaded internationally to national and then to local so that these policies must be followed by stakeholders, by teachers in the schools, uh, so that everybody, even those in the remote areas, can have access to information. So, why? Why do we need to study these ICT policies? There is an analogy I remember of an eagle who always soars high above the clouds when it storms. I know it does not stay below the clouds and experiences the storm. It flies above the cloud and sees below what happens below so like the teacher if you want to be a full-fledged ready teacher afterwards um, you better prepare yourself equip yourselves with every knowledge that you think is necessary for you to uh, for you to um, to use when you are in the field so why study ICT policies because down at the the, the lowest um, uh, I mean, there is an international policy which is cascaded to the national policy and the national policy cascades it down to local policies. The local policies cascades it to the teachers and then the teachers cascades it to the, the learners. And the learners eventually, the learners eventually will boomerang kung ano ang nakascade from international to national to local will cascade, uh, will boomerang it to the future. So, why ICT policies? Para alam na natin kung anong, kung pag nagtuturo na tayo, alam na natin kung para saan to. Ah, I remember this one. This is part of the ICT policies that we have discussed when we were, uh, when we were still college students. Ano? So, internationally, what's the, what's the significance of ICT policy? Let me read to you this one. As we enter the 21st century, there has been considerable international attention given to the role that ICT can play, not only in economic, in social, edu in, and educational change. The role has been most pronounced in the world's developed countries. Example, the States, uh, Russia, United, Sta United Kingdom. Um, the role has been most pronounced in the world's developed countries where technology has permitted businesses, schools, and homes and changed the way that people work, learn, and play. The impact that ICT has had to date in the developed world and the potential yet for further dramatic changes is reflected in a range of multinational policy documents. 
Actually, the leaders of the world's eight major industrialized democracy, yun nga, which includes Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom, the United States, Russia, they have noted that ICT has become an engine of growth for the global economy and has the potential Take note to contribute significantly to sustainable economic development, to enhance public welfare, to strengthen democracy, to increase transparency in governance, to nourish cultural diversity, and to foster international and international peace and stability. So, that's just one. Another, the group, uh, the group, yung G8 na yon, also emphasizes the need to develop human resources capable of responding to the demands of the information age and to nurture ICT literacy and skills through education, training, and lifelong learning. Ang hirap naman yata if your students uh, in the future when you are already teaching are very knowledgeable of ICT uh, and what the national and international or what are the provisions of the international and uh, national policies. Tapos ikaw na teacher hindi mo alam. Diba? So, hmm. better listen and equip yourselves with this knowledge. Ano pa? The OECD hmm, or the Organization for Econ Economic Cooperation and Development in 2001 and 2006 also emphasizes the econ economic importance and impact of ICT in developed countries and points out the need for these countries to develop a workforce with the skills to use ICT to increase, increase productivity as well as the need for young people to develop ICT skills in preparation for adult life. So you are a part of this vision. You are a part of this plan. You are taught this subject. You have this subject, technology for teaching and learning. And this ICT policies is part of your lesson because you are seen to be contributing to, to increase productivity. You are contributory to this one, the need for young people to develop ICT skills in preparation for adult life. Actually, in uh, uh, in um, the World Bank in 2004, um, has this, in, in the report of World Bank in 2004, this is stated, most education policies in education, in, in education, address the following. Most, most ICT should be. Most ICT policies in education address the following. According to a report of World Bank in 2004, vision and planning. Ano? Uh, what is the vision and what is the plan in order for these ICT policies to be cascaded to the, to the, uh, to the target? Ano? What else? Number two, ICT infrastructure. What infrastructure are needed in order for this vision and this plan to be achieved? How are we going to equip with teachers with the knowledge and skills so that they can teach? They can teach skills and competencies in order for this vision and this plan to, to be achieved. What learning resources are we going to use in order for, for these teachers to teach these skills and competencies to achieve the vision and plan? What else? Uh, how are you going to manage information so that the vision and plan will materialize? I think this ME is part. Of, uh, I think part of this ME is rather is your LRN, your learner's reference number, so that wherever you go, for example, if you are from Luzon and you transfer to Mindanao, uh, DepEd or our Department of Education can just follow you up. Kung nasan kang parte ng mundo or saan kang parte ng Pilipinas. And then monitoring and evaluation, research, and innovation, of course, part of this. How are we going to monitor the development? How are we going to evaluate? How are we going to do research? And, how, and what innovations can we make? And of course, it talked about <clears throat> equity, inclusion, and safety. How, are, how sure are we that uh, this provision, these policies uh, will, be, um, will be delivered to all? Okay, so ano ba itong mga uh, pag-uusapan nating ICT policies? We will be talking about the four alternative policy rationals or 
in short, yung uh, four strategic policies na sinasabi natin and five components of ICT programs or the operational policies. So, pero, bakit muna? Why do we need to talk about this? The rationale for strategic policy for education. ICT-based innovation can and does occur in classrooms already and schools without their being a close linkage to national policy. Also, there are often many ICT programs and projects sponsored by NGOs and corporations apart from national policies and programs, but without the guidance of national policies and resources of corollary programs. It is less likely that individual schools and classroom innovations will be sustained. Sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, um, there is already technology that is practiced in in uh, some parts of, or uh, a certain school is already practicing a very beautiful uh, a very beautiful ICT based innovation or meron silang napakagaling na teacher when it comes to ICT innovation pero why do we still need to have this strategic policy Without this innovation na ginagawa ng napakagaling na teacher or napakagaling na institution, without this being aligned to the national policies or the international policies, or without the guidance of national policies and the resources of corollary programs, it is less likely that individual school and classroom innovations will be sustained. Ano pa? Without the shared vision of national policy and efforts of NGOs and corporations uh, may very well go in divergent directions or work at cross purposes and their contributions to the nation's education effort are more likely to be marginalized or even neutralized. In brief, without a strategic rationale to guide the national the use of technology in education, ICT policy is only operational. So, hindi siya strategic. In short, policy becomes technocentric. Meron tayong tawag, tinatawag na technocentric. Promoting the chain, the purchase, purchase of equipment of the training of, or the training of teachers without providing a strong educational purpose or goal for the use of technology. Meaning, kahit napakagaling ng teacher, with uh, an ICT-based innovation. Kung umalis na yung teacher, wala na. But if the policy or if the practice of the school is aligned with national policy, the teacher may train another teacher so that there will be sustainability of the practice that is done by teacher when it comes to ICT innovation. So, yun ang kung bakit natin pag-aaralan itong strategic policy and operational policy.